name is Lori Rubin. Uh, I will be hosting this webinar, but we've got our special guest, uh, Richard Harrington, a fantastic photographer, educator. Uh, you're going to learn a lot from him, and we're just so happy to have him uh, showing you this webinar. So I hope you get a lot out of it. Uh, Rich, go ahead and take it away. Great. Well, I am glad that so many of you guys were able to join us today. And we're talking about one of my favorite technologies, which is LUT mapping. And it doesn't actually sound nearly as cool as it is, but a LUT is a lookup table. And essentially what this does is it redefines how colors behave in an image. So it's kind of like a preset but it's a bit more absolute. What it does is it consistently looks at the colors and then shifts them based upon a new recipe. And these sometimes get used for technical things, like if you've ever used a color checker, you can export uh, a color checker as a lookup table so that it creates a calibration table or they get used for monitor calibration. But these have really risen in popularity between the film and video and photography industries because it actually allows us to exchange cool information um, between applications about how we want to handle color and it allows for all sorts of options. So today, we're gonna to walk through how to use the effect and then how to get more out of the effect by putting some effects before the LUT map, which sort of things you should do to pre-process the image or refine the LUT. And, and then I'll also show you how lookup tables can be created from things like your Lightroom presets. You can actually export a Lightroom preset as a LUT, so you can then move that preset into Luminar. And so I'll show you how that works. So feel free along the way to ask any questions that you might have uh, in the chat pod and Lori will uh, occasionally pound some of those in and we'll do our best to tackle them. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. So first up, LUT mapping is available to you under the filters catalog. So if you just type in the word LUT, it's here in the professional category and some of the workspaces will have lookup tables already assigned. Now, I'm going to go with the uh, professional workspace here, and that's just going to sort of redefine things. And before you apply a LUT, you should always take advantage of either the develop or the raw develop filter. That's going to allow you to just quickly dial things in where you need to for your shadows and your highlights, contrast, et cetera. And if you needed to do anything with the lens or transformation to fix perspective issues, get that out of the way. While you're at it, you know, feel free to tweak the denoise, adjust your vibrance, or use things like the AI filter to quickly enhance the image. Now, what I tend to do is I now will add an adjustment layer. So putting the adjustment layer in there is going to make it easier for you to immediately isolate the effect on its own layer. And so typically what I refer to this is the difference between color correction and color grading. So correction is the act of getting the image where you want it to be for the default position. So you would do that with something like the professional workspace. On the grading side, just add a new adjustment layer and on that adjustment layer, apply the LUT mapping filter. Now, some of you don't like using layers and you don't have to, but my preference is I love to be able to get blending modes. And blending modes are these great options that actually change the way the layer interacts with everything else. So it's kind of like taking any of your effects and giving them 13 more different outputs right at your fingertips, which is really kind of cool. So by default, there's a couple of lookup tables that are included in the application. So these are some different recipes that you can try to just kind of get you jump started. For example, a nice tritone effect. And what that's going to do is assign this older sort of romantic classic black and white look, but it's not a straight black and white look. It has a little bit of bluish tones mixed in. And that's kind of cool. And this instantly jumps the effect. Now you have a couple of controls here within the LUT, you can decide to boost the contrast more or reduce it. And you see how that affects the black point in the image as well as the saturation of the effect. And so depending upon the LUT, changing this can really give you some different overall impressions of how it's applied. 
Now, this is simple enough, and a lot of folks just go, okay, well, I can now try another one. What does this one do? And as you try out different lookup tables, for example, 1960s gives it that sort of faded feeling of photos from the 1960s. And so what we have here is you could, of course, tweak the overall contrast amount and the total saturation conversion, but this gives you a film stock simulation that's evocative of a time period. And so depending upon if you want 1960 or 1990, uh, we have a couple of different film stocks in there that sort of simulate that classic amount. But because this is just meant to be a jumping off point, what's important is that you realize that this is a starting position. So once you've applied the effect, if it's on its own adjustment layer, it is super easy to change its bonding mode. You can go in and try out different options here. So that sepia tone put in overlay mode is now so much more gentle. And I like this look, it's sort of aging the photo without being that cheesy sort of over the top sepia tone effect that's often done too strongly. And now you've got that ability and you can tweak the amount here, but this allows for subtle color grading changing the feeling or the emotional response you have to the picture. So it's great that we can actually take this level of control. All right, that's the basics. Now we're gonna go a lot deeper, but Lori, any questions bounce up so far? I'm not able to see those very easily. Uh, no, not yet. I'm kind of working through them right now, but I'll, I'll save a couple of them for okay. you in a minute. <laughs> no problem. Thanks. All right, so let's switch to another image here. And we're going to do this process, but take it a little bit further. Now, what I want to focus on is the ability to get creative. So we've given you some extra lookup tables that you're able to download, and I'll show you how easy it is to work with those. So what I tend to do is quickly develop the image. So take the photo and get a nice, good, high contrast image, if that's the type of look you're going for. It's nice to have a good full mapping up here on the histogram between black and white. Now, what I suggest, a lot of people don't realize that you can do this, is you could turn on these clipping indicators, and that's gonna show you what are called hot and cold pixels. So if you get too far along here, those cold pixels, the blue ones here, are indicating areas that have been crushed to pure black. So you may wanna be careful with that, either lifting the shadows a little bit more. And if you start to see areas that are turning red, those are hot pixels, areas where there's no detail because it's been pushed to a pure white. So what I recommend as a pre-process is get it so that you've got a good overall balance between the cold pixels and the black pixels and those white or red pixels there. And this is gonna allow you to get a nice balance. Now, it's okay if certain areas like this little glint of a highlight here have gone to pure white. The purists might say, you know, back that off ever so slightly. And now what I really have here is in scene that has a complete dynamic range. So getting an image to have a full range between black and white is a pretty good idea. The accent AI filter is also a nice way to really fill in the color there. And you'll notice it pushed the highlights just a little, but I still feel pretty good here that we have minimal clipping and a great white and black point. Now that works really nicely. All right, let's add an adjustment layer. And now I'm gonna convert this to a black and white image. I'm a big fan of black and white photography. Now we'll just call this black and white. And a lot of you may be familiar that we already have a black and white filter inside of Luminar, which is great. I use that a lot, but I wanna take advantage here and use a lookup table for the black and white conversion. So let's just open this up. And first I'm gonna apply an effect that I like to use to really tweak the individual area, and that's HSL. And then we'll follow that up right afterwards with LUT mapping. So this gives us the ability to control the hue, saturation, and luminance within the image, and then we can apply the LUT. So for example, you'll notice here that if I choose hue and I start to move the green, 
it manipulates the green within the photo and I'm shifting the color of the foliage. If I decide that I want the red to be a little bit brighter, I can roll that hue and pop the saturation on the red. And you see it starts to show us that there is a change. So this HSL filter is gonna really come in handy later because LUT mapping reassigns the colors. But by using HSL before it, I can tweak those colors before they're reassigned. Now, I know that sounds a little complex, but let's toss on a black and white LUT and this will make sense. So I'm just gonna click choose and this allows me to load a custom LUT file. Now, by the way, you might've noticed here, download new LUT files. So let's talk about that first. If you tweak this, you can actually go to our website and you'll find three free preset packs right now. So this is really cool. There's a nice set here from a company called Ludify.me. These are really cool. And uh, this is a company that specializes in making lookup tables. So you see here, they've got some and you can see how they've processed it. And this is just giving you some different color grades and fills. So this is pretty cool the ability to actually get these film stock simulations. That's what we have here. You see it's emphasizing the teal and orange colors. So it's kind of really fun and these are great to download. They got a nice Kodachrome stock there, for example. So I would encourage you, if you haven't done so, just click that and download it. While you're at it, we also have the winter presets and some cinematic presets that are free for download. And keep an eye on this page, there's new ones coming. If you'd also really get into this, they do have some very cool winter inspired ones here that really are designed to help bring out some of those cool blue tones in the winter. Okay, so let's try this out. I've already downloaded the free lookup tables that we put together for this webinar. Lori gave you the link in the chat pod and I'll just choose load custom LUT file. This brings up a dialogue and let's just navigate here. I've put them on my desktop and I just put them all into a folder. So here are the webinar LUTs and you see that we've got a couple of different styles. So I'm gonna choose this one called black and white and I'll open that up and it applies this black and white look. Now, what we're seeing here is that that black and white look pushed the black and white point a bit. So we are having some crushed pixels, but you can decide if that's a big deal. If it is to you, just go back to the original layer here and you can tone down the shadows and the highlights or pull the exposure down a little bit before the black and white effect. And that's still looking okay to me. I don't mind that high contrast. What we have here is a great, really dynamic range, high contrast black and white, which is cool. But now using HSL, I can tweak this. So for example, if we go to the luminance area for the reds, you might've recalled that the symbols here on the side were red. And what I wanna do is tweak those. They're kind of getting lost in the black and white. So by dragging the luminance slider for the red, I can bring those reddish tones out. You notice there how I darkened them down and now they're popping into the black and white image and they're really coming through. Conversely, I'm finding that the tree is a little too dominant in the background. So I can lighten those areas up and you see how simple that is. And we can even boost the saturation or tone it down. And a lot of folks don't think about the fact that pre-processing your black and white photo before the black and white conversion gives you entirely different results. So this is really fun. I've now taken complete control over that black and white photo. And let's just finish this out. I'm gonna do two things to really bring this into play. One, I'm gonna add a texture overlay. Now, I've put together a texture pack that I'm gonna show you here in just a second that you can download for free. And I'll just click load textures and I'm gonna to navigate to my black and white toolkit here. And these are some painted textures that I made several years ago. Uh, we had a slow day around the office and we just took out canvases and started painting. And just a lot of brush strokes speckled and fun and started getting different types of hand painted textures. And these were great. So now I can layer that on top and this makes it easy for me to adjust the amount in. 
Now, if you want, you can also put that texture on its own layer and have even more control with blending modes. But this texture overlay is a nice, simple way. And you do see that you can blend it here too. So we can change how that is being layered in. For example, something like Lighten is a little more dramatic. And I like there how that's creating a little bit of distressed texture in some of those areas that we're looking flat. See, without and with, it's just bringing it to life a little bit more. And now let's finish that out with just a vignette. There we go. And we will grab that and just apply the stylistic vignette that we want. There we go. Perfect. Now, the cool thing is that all of this work that you've done, including the LUT mapping effect, can be stored as a custom preset. So it'll actually now save the lookup table that you've applied within the preset as part of this recipe. So I can go in to my preset area here, and I'm just going to save this as a filter preset. And we'll just call this black and white street. There we go. I'll click create. And it will be added into my user preset folder. So there we go. I just started clean for this webinar, so I didn't have any presets. And let's switch to another image here. So here's another street photography scene from that trip to Tokyo, uh, a nice vibrant fish market. And uh, I'm just going to add that adjustment layer in, and we'll toss on that same black and white preset. So I'll go to my user presets. There we go. And you'll see that it applies and gives it that exact same look. Now, what's kind of cool here too, is that now by using the user preset technology, we've actually can get a visual preset of what that lookup table is gonna look like. So you see the thumbnails in there too. So this is a nice way to convert your LUTs into visual presets. Now, if you actually save the LUT mapping effect with your custom lookup table in it, it bundles that all up into a cool user preset. So if you move systems or give this to someone else, they actually get the lookup table bundled into the effect, which is really kind of cool. All right, Lori, how are we doing? We're doing great. In fact, you're, they're asking questions and then you're fulfilling their answers before I can even ask you. <laughs> so very good. Um, so I'm I, psychic. That's great. <laughs> you are psychic. Very good. Um, we do have some questions from several folks that want an explanation of what's the difference between a LUT versus a filter preset or an action. Sure. So let's let's switch applications for just a moment and we're going to get nerdy. So I'm going to go to an application called Lattice for a moment. And none of you are going to need to download this application, but it allows me to show you what's inside of a lookup table. So let me open up one of these lookup tables we were just using. And so I'll take that black and white lookup table that we were just processing. And what this allows me to do is I can visualize this lookup table. And so the lookup table is a recipe that contains information about color and tone. So it doesn't, it's not a preset as much as it is as an actual definition of what colors are. So if we look at this here, I can view the curve and you see that this particular lookup table, for example, is crushing the blues. And then it starts to apply a gentle lift in the midtones and rounds off. But the reason why it's not a straight black and white conversion is there's subtle variations here between the red, green, and blue channels. So this is what's happened. So when this lookup table was created, it's one that I built, uh, I made a curves adjustment. Now, currently, Luminar doesn't give you the ability to export lookup tables, but I will talk about how we can get lookup tables from other applications or you can download them. So this is what's happening on the curve side. Yeah, you, know, you might be wondering why it's called a cube format. You can actually visualize this as a 3D model and it's going to show you how the colors have been shifted. So you can sort of see here that the colors are getting converted into a simple black and white line. Now, let's open up a more colorful lookup table, not one that's black and white, and we'll do this one that's called Cool Winter, and then I'll also apply it to an image. But you see what's happening here is it's shifting that to cool bluish winter tones. It kind of looks like winter lighting. 
And if we look at that as a cube model, what you'll be able to see is that the colors have been sort of shifted, right? Like if this was normal, all the colors would be evenly distributed. So this is three-dimensionally showing you red, green, and blue. Essentially, red, green, and blue are their own axis, and it's creating a 3D model out of color. In this case, what's happening, though, is you see that the details are pushed towards blue. The reason why the image looks bluer is that all of the tones have been emphasized, and we've been pushing them with a skew to the blue. If you look at the curve, you can see that, too. For those of you familiar with curves, we've popped the blues and the greens here and pushed them up much higher than the reds. That's why we're getting a bluish tone. So does that make sense? It's essentially pushing it to a certain area. So where this comes in handy is that a lookup table allows for exchange of data between applications. So one of the things that's come up a lot is a lot of Lightroom users who use Luminar have expressed a desire to be able to get their presets or their adjustments out of Lightroom and be able to take that effect into Luminar. Maybe they've done a certain adjustment a specific way. So that's great. Well, we can do that. One of the things is, is that there's actually a plugin available. I'll show it to you here. Uh, it is called the Export LUT Lightroom plugin, and it's available from John Ellis, uh, johnrellis.com slash Lightroom. And he sells this for $10, but there is a free version that you can try out to see if you like what it does. And what this is going to do is convert a Lightroom preset into a LUT. So if you're working in Lightroom and you've done a particular look or a grade, all of those settings from the develop module can be handed off. Now, what's going to work best here is if this is applied to a non-RAW file, but even with a RAW file, it still goes mostly okay. And what we do is we choose File, Export, here we go, Plugin Extras, and I choose Export Lookup Table. And this will analyze the selected photo, and it's going to pull that color information into a lookup table. Now, we can also do this using uh, any other type of image here. We can actually just select multiple presets that we have installed in Lightroom. So if you do have lots of presets loaded, you can actually grab multiple ones all at once and pull those out too. So you don't have to worry about that. You see they're all in there. Like there's this sports portrait grit. I can select that and just click export. And it will take that Lightroom preset out of my library and turn it into a lookup table that I can use in Luminar. Or if you've developed an individual image inside of Lightroom, File, Plugin Extras, Export LUT, you can actually take the selected photo that you've done and save that lookout too. So it will allow you to take a selected photo and when you click Export, it'll put it out. Now, there are a couple of settings that don't translate. So things like sharpening, and noise reduction and vignettes, those aren't part of a LUT uh, because a LUT is only color and tone. So sharpening isn't tone or color and a vignette isn't the same. So those won't get handed off, but everything else will. So if I export that, it's gonna take that setting and generate a lookup table that I can use inside of Luminar. So let's go back to Luminar for a second here. And I'll just switch to another photo. Let's go here. We'll come back to that robot. He's fun. And uh, what I'm going to do is add an adjustment layer. And we'll just put the LUT on there. By the way, uh, you can actually now press Command L on the Mac, and that'll bring up your filter list, which is a nice new shortcut. Choose LUT mapping, and I'll just choose a custom LUT. And if I go into the ones that I just exported, you'll see them available here. So there is that individual image that I had previously selected. I click open. And it applied that same black and white preset from Lightroom. If I want to take that sports grit look uh, made by uh, Robert Finelli, he's a, one of our trainers as well, and he has a Lightroom preset he likes to use all the time. Well, now it's giving it that gritty color look, and you see that it's just changing it and sort of desaturated and a little bit cooler. 
So it's fun how quick you can use these and it allows you to just jump between images. So we'll just apply that directly here. Normally I'd pre-process, but I'll just show you how fast and easy this is. And any LUTs that you've recently used, by the way, are gonna appear right here under recent LUTs. So you don't have to keep navigating to them. You'll get the last five that you've used and it makes it super easy to grab that and toss it on. So, and then anything else like the vignette or sharpening that you've done, you can just add that back in. And so now it's super easy and I've got that same sort of look that I had in Lightroom. Now I'll save that as a preset. So to go back to the question, what's the difference between a LUT and a preset? And I think the question was an action. So actions are Photoshop technology that run multiple filters in a row. And that's cool. Um, it's really just like a combination of filters. And that's the same thing as a Luminar preset. So a Luminar preset is like a Photoshop action in that it lets you apply lots of filters in a row with specified values. What the LUT map is, is it's a recipe that you want to use again. So it is a collection of color grading or tonality shifts for black and white or color that you want to use again. And it just brings it back in and it makes it consistent. And what's great about LUTs is that as you move from image to image, they're super consistent. Unlike presets that sometimes vary a bit when you switch from photo to photo, if you remember to just color correct the image first and then apply the LUT, you will get a very consistent look as you move through. So did that answer the question, Lori? Yeah, that's great. Very good, thank you. Okay, sure. All right, let's talk about some more freebies that you can download and I'll show you how those work. Uh, and then we're gonna switch to some color looks. Uh, I had mentioned a black and white toolkit. Um, this is posted over at Photo Focus. If you just do a search for a free black and white toolkit for Luminar, uh, they've got a toolkit there that you can download and it includes uh, some presets for pre-processing as well as some lookup tables here that you can apply. And these will work here with Luminar. So works out well. Uh, and let me show you how that can be used. So first up, I'm gonna choose to add some custom presets. So I'll add a custom preset pack. And in that black and white toolkit, there are some pre-processing presets. And so these will make it easy to quickly develop the image. So let me show you what that looks like. Now, a lot of folks get a little bit confused because they're like, well, why do these presets not make the image look black and white? <laughs> so what they're doing is they're pre-processing the image. So you see here, we have a nice one for high contrast versus a little bit more dramatic glows, a faded look, a little bit of a strong landscape look, which really pops the contrast, or one that makes it a bit softer and blooms the light. So these are that whole idea of quickly pre-processing the image before you apply the LUT. So LUTs can be very useful, but they're designed to run after you get the image to look kind of like you want. So you think of it as, give me a great looking full color image, and then let me apply the lookup table. Now, if I add that adjustment layer, just because I like to keep the LUTs on their own layer, but you don't have to, you could put it right after if you want. We can now toss on that LUT mapping effect. So there it is, LUT mapping. And I'll now choose a LUT. So in that black and white toolkit that you're free to download, you will find about 25, I think, yeah, quite a bit, uh, different lookup tables. Some for portraits, some for landscapes, general film stocks that simulate specific cameras, and some high contrast ones. So let's go one here that's sort of a Kodak black and white film stock, and I'll click open, and it applies it. And remember, you've got the ability to tweak the contrast, and that's gonna push it a little bit further, and the overall saturation of the lookup table. And it's strange, but even black and white effects are affected by saturation. Now, let me just try something totally different, and I'm gonna go with one of the high contrast black and white looks. And you see we get a completely different result here for black and white. So it's changed the way that the image is applied. And remember, black and white effects can also be used at lower amounts to give you sort of an aged photo look, which can be fun. So this gives you all sorts of options. And remember, 
blending modes. Soft light. Using a black and white adjustment effect in soft light mode gives you this cool high contrast, sort of a bleach bypass look. Putting in something like multiply mode just gives you moody shadows. And so lighten. You can see that changing the blending mode of the lookup table totally gives you completely different effects every single time. So it's kind of fun how versatile this effect is, particularly when you use those blending modes. All right, let me show you another workflow. And this is one that's actually becoming more and more common. So these days, there's lots of projects where people are working between applications. So they might be working with a video editor who is doing certain things to images, or maybe they're working on a TV commercial or a web video for a Facebook page. And they've come up with a particular way that they've made the images look. So in this case, you see they've sort of given it this gritty aged color look. Well, a lookup table is able to be moved between applications. So this is Adobe Premiere Pro. It's a common video editing tool. And tools like DaVinci Resolve have this, and Final Cut Pro 10 has it through the use of a third-party plugin. And what we can do is I can actually click right here on the Lumetri color effect, and I can export a cube file. So now, let's just call this Gator, because <laughs> it's a simple name. Uh, We'll call it aged gator. There we go. And I'll just put that into my LUTs folder here so it's easier for me to find. I recommend you keep these in a single folder on your system so they're always in the same place. And now if I switch back over to Luminar, let's just get another image. So this one, I want to give it that same aged look. Maybe it's part of the same campaign. So easy enough, we'll add on our filter and we'll just toss on the LUT mapping effect, there we go. And now I can load that. So let's just down here, let's choose the LUT. And we'll just load the custom LUT. And there's my aged gator, click open. And the color information is gonna be handed off between the two programs. So that's gonna allow us to exchange data. Now, let's go ahead here and I'll just put a new adjustment layer in for a second so I have even more control. There we go. And let's just add that LUT mapping effect and we'll put two in this time. So we'll put that first one in, there we go. And we can hand that data off. So this gives you that ability to export files, which should be useful. Just make sure you've got the clip selected and you can hand things off. You just click on that and you choose to export the cube format. There we go. And it will hand off that color data. So easy enough. Uh, you can actually do the same thing in Photoshop too. So if you're working with somebody who uses Photoshop, some of you mentioned that you were Photoshop users and you're using Luminar as a plugin, anything that you've done inside here with adjustment layers can be handed off. So in this case, let's just open up this image here. I've done a conversion and I've just sort of shifted the hue. Well, let's do another recipe here really quick. And let's just say I had a really strong, vibrant image with a curve on it. There we go. And a little bit of a black and white effect, like so. Well, Photoshop is gonna give you the ability to say file export color lookup table. So if you use Luminar with Photoshop, you can do this here, and we'll just call this bleached reds. There we go. And I'll copy that. And now I can save that. Let's just name it and click save. And now if we go back into Luminar, let's just load that. Let's get an image that actually has some reds in it. This should work. And let's just quickly develop this image. 
one of the things I really love is that the Accent AI filter is so fast at helping you pop some of those images. But we can finesse that as well with things like raw develop. We'll just get a nice high contrast image there. There we go. And let's set the white point. Perfect. Now we'll add the lookup table. There we go. And I can load that one that I exported from Photoshop. So bleached reds, open. And you see it applied that higher contrast look with the reds being shifted. So it's great here that we can dial that in. And remember, you can adjust the contrast and the saturation of the effect to refine it within the LUT map. So it's pretty cool how quickly we can exchange data. So hopefully that gives you a good explanation of why lookup tables are useful because they allow you to hand off data between applications. So if you've been using one tool and you're migrating to Luminar, it means that you can take some of those looks and move them along. Or if you're collaborating with others who are using other tools, well, it means that you can actually have a recipe and share that data, which is pretty cool. So we got some more stuff to look at. I wanna walk through some color and some subtle looks now, but uh, Lori, any other questions? And just a quick check, how are we doing on time? Uh, we're doing good on time. Um, one thing I've been getting multiple questions about is your workflow. Are LUTs mm -hmm. something that you should do at the beginning of your workflow or at the end? Well, that's a great question. So the answer of course is it depends. Um, if you are using a lookup table, to correct color, like if you've used a color checker, a passport color checker, things like that, those tools come with the ability to make a lookup table. So if you were using a color calibrator on set, you might apply that right at the beginning to sort of act as a calibration tool. And that's great. Uh, if you are wanting to do this, I would suggest for the most part that you separate the grading from the correction. And so I'll give you a good example. So let's just take this image back. This here is a uh, DNG raw file. So this is an HDR that was put together by somebody in Lightroom and they handed off the DNG file to me. And the DNG doesn't have all the information in it that we need. So this image isn't ready for color grading, but it is ready to be developed. So in this case, I'll just use the professional workspace. And what I'm doing is just taking advantage of that DNG that has uh, all the raw data in there and I'll recover the highlights and lift the shadows and get a little boost to clarity. And now if I look at my dynamic range here, it's getting pretty good. I might boost the contrast a little bit more to push that dynamic range out, just being careful that I don't get any hot or cold pixels. So now it's looking pretty good. You know, I can take advantage of Accent AI to get a little bit more detail in there. It's a little bit rich on color there. So uh, I might tone that down a little bit, but now the image is developed. And now that I've got the general look that I want, I'm ready to stylize. So in this case, adding the adjustment layer for lookup tables can be useful. Now, if you're doing something like a black and white conversion, you might throw that on right away, but then actually go back and start to tweak. But let's go here and do that two filter combination we talked about before. Toss on HSL and then toss on LUT mapping. These two filters working hand in hand are fantastic. So let's just load one of those downloaded LUTs. So we mentioned that the LUTify LUTs were free for download. And uh, I'm just gonna open those up here. And here's that free preset pack that they've done. And let's go with something fun here. We'll try brown. It sounds a nice evocative color. And I like that. It's shifting the feeling here of the overall image. And this is great. But looking at this, I see I got a couple of cold pixels here and the sky is not exactly where I want. So using the HSL adjustment, I can now tweak the LUT. The LUT got me to a cool point of the color grading. Hey, give this this rich brownish earth tone feeling, which is great. But now let me tweak it. 
Now, remember, you do have contrast here, which controls how strong the blacks are, and that can be useful to prevent clipping. And you do have saturation, so you can make it richer or more subdued. And that's great. But this is where HSL comes in. So I can say, you know what? Let's go after the blues. The sky is not quite the blue I want. So let's roll the aqua a little bit and the blue tones a little bit and see how I'm changing the color of the sky. I'm going to a little bit more of a tealish aquamarine because that feels more like the faded browns to me. And I like the sky, but it's not quite as strong as I want. So I'll just bump up the saturation for the aqua and the blue. And those areas become a little stronger. And I can lighten those ever so slightly. And remember, if you lighten an area, it tends to wash out the color a little bit. So you might need to come back and tweak your saturations. While I'm at it, I'm just gonna lift my oranges ever so slightly. And you see how that's controlling some of the areas of the landscape. And I like that because it's creating a little bit of a better edge where we see that separation. And then using the yellow slider, that's targeting that zone. So it's an interesting way that you can really target specific areas within a photo and get the recipe. So the LUT is the jump start. You can build upon other people's knowledge about color grading and stylistic color and use it as sort of the foundation for your recipe. But I don't know if any of you are like me, like I'm only so good with a cookbook, no matter how the cookbook wrote it, I'm still going to tweak it. And I might cut the things a little bit differently or put in a little more butter and a little bit more seasoning than the recipe calls for because, hey, I like it. And that's OK, because it's my recipe. So I'm using the lot mapping effect as a jump start here. It's allowing me to jump start that image and pull it into where I want. But the HSL effect as a preprocessor lets me override the LUT and get the results that I want. So this works great hand in hand. And so this is gonna allow you to get really cool color effects without, to be perfectly honest, having to drive yourself nuts. And these are awesome because essentially, while I love the fact that we have so many presets built in and everything else that you can use as a great starting point, there are tons and tons of websites with downloadable LUTs. These have become so popular in the film and video industry, they're used on movies and TV commercials, that you can find huge quantities of websites that have these available for both sale and for free. So that Lutify preset that's free, they've got tons more on their website that they sell. And this just allows you to extend the capabilities of Luminar. You can now plug in all these extra recipes from third-party developers and get an entire rich ecosystem of whatever you want. Or if you're using tools like Lightroom or Photoshop or Premiere, you can also take color data that you've created over there and export it as a LUT and bring it in and do some pretty cool stuff. All right, we're gonna go back to some subtle looks next, Lori, but were there any other questions that I did not address? Did, I, did that answer the question? That answered the question, that's great, thank you. Anything else in the queue before we shift to another example? Yeah, let's see here. So uh, there are a couple of questions regarding the cube file. Does it need to reside on the hard drive once you put it into the preset? Sure. So if you've updated Luminar, now the preset will bundle the cube file into the preset. So if that lookup table is no longer on the system, it's supposed to still have the data wrapped up inside. Now, I'm a big believer that supposed to and computer files, there's lots of things that could go wrong as you're working. So I always believe in saving those. And that's why I make a folder and put them all in. Uh, one easy workflow is to use something like a Dropbox solution or uh, a Google Drive or whatever else you're going to use and just put those in one location there. That way, if you use a laptop and a desktop, they're always in sync and it's really easy to access. But you should be able to see that data and it's supposed to bundle it into the preset even if you move systems. So that's a recent update. Uh, the lookup table mapping filter didn't originally do that, but they did just put out an update a, a couple of days ago uh, that you guys might have missed. And so just make sure you uh, go under and you check for updates and that should now store it inside of the preset when you save a preset. Oh, and by the way, remember, when you save a native Luminar file, when you choose save, 
totally take advantage of this because what this will do is it will save everything inside. So if you save the original resources and the history, plus now we can make Mac and Windows compatible files, this will actually store the history document in there. So when you open the file back up later, you can actually start to modify it and it will have all of the data inside there. So it makes it really easy to come back and make tweaks later if you decide to revisit an image or you want to do some additional work to it. Okay. Great. All right. Other questions, Lori, before we go forward? Okay, one more. Um, what was the software that you used to preview the LUT cube file again? People are asking about Sure. That. So I used a program called Lattice. It is not a cheap tool. So uh, this is a relatively expensive professional tool, but it allows you to build custom lookup tables. And so you can actually modify things or import images and analyze them. So this is a pro end tool that uh, people who do color for a living uh, would use, but it is a few hundred dollars. So um, I, I'm not suggesting that you all run out and buy it, but if this is something that you do a ton of, you do a lot of color calibration and a lot of color workflows, uh, this is a cool tool that's out there. There are some other tools available as well. So just look for tools that are designed for uh, lookup table manipulation. And uh, that's one of the things you can see. Great. Okay. And for everybody, right. I'll put that link in the chat window along with the PhotoFocus free black and white toolkit and your free set of LUT should be there as well. Great. So let's take a, a sort of classic landscape image and use a lookup table just to give this a different feel. So one of my favorite uses of a lookup table is film stock simulation. Uh, and this tends to be pretty straightforward. Remember, you should do whatever it takes to get the image to look where you want it to look. So again, reading the histogram is a great idea. Getting a good high contrast image with the appropriate dynamic range, all of that's gonna help. You know, Accent AI can be really quite useful. You know, do whatever it takes to get the image exactly where you want it to be, okay? Uh, you know, any pre-processing such as the polarizing filter, dehaze, tint removal, all that stuff is a good idea. You know, let's just go ahead and toss on the tint removal plug in here. And this filter is gonna allow us to sort of get those nice clean uh, things. We'll just type in remove color cast, there we go. And this is gonna allow us to sort of latch in and pull out some of the color cast in the clouds. So great, the image is now developed. And remember, if there are other things you need to take advantage of, for example, we can compensate here for the curvature in the horizon. There we go. And I'm just going to position that image ever so slightly using that grid there to sort of help me. There we go. And let's just scale that up. And so now the image is corrected. And this is great, you know, corrected is important. Getting it back to look like how it did when you took the photo or how it looked in your mind's eye is important. This is the correction pass. And this is what needs to be done per image. Every image, every lighting condition is gonna be different. So before you apply the lookup table, get the photo to look normal or how you want without style. So. I call that the base image, and it's an important step. Then, by tossing on your new adjustment layer, this is where you toss on that color grading. And so this is the style layer. And now, all we're gonna do is jump down to that professional category and grab those two filters which are conveniently located together, HSL and LUT mapping. So now, let's just toss on one of those presets. I'll go in and I'm gonna to go to that LUTify pack and let's choose the, let's go here. Uh, we'll go with Kodak Chrome. So K Chrome is a Kodak simulation and it's just shifting it slightly to give you the type of gamma and color response that Kodak Film had. So this is their simulation of Kodak Chrome. That's great. You'll also notice that we have another simulation, Kodak Chrome, that's built in. And this is a little bit more aggressive, but it's pushing it. Now, again, if you see those clipping indicators, this is warning you that you're getting crushed whites or blacks. In this case, we have some crushed highlights. You can decide to back off the filter 
with the amount slider if you want, or take advantage of things like luminosity here. And this can make it really easy so you can target areas and back them off, or just go back to the original image here. And it's very simple to tweak things like the exposure before the color grade. So easy enough, we've got the type of image that we want, and this allows us to just dial it in. Now there's nothing wrong with a clip pixel. I just want you to realize that those red pixels are lacking in detail. So you may want to get those basically right. Now we've got the film stock simulation and so easy to switch between these. So anything that you've been working with, you can just grab and apply, tweak the contrast and tweak the saturation and you've got that classic film stock look. And so normal photo, film stock. It's subtle, but some of you wanted subtle effects. And this just gives it a more filmic response. Now the curve and the gamma is more like film. If you want to try something totally different, that's why it's so easy to load. Just bounce on over and let's try this chrono print with teal and orange emphasis. And you see that it brings out the blues and the oranges a bit, giving it a totally different feel. A nice sort of aged look that is a little bit more bluish and romantic. So this is very much about changing the emotional response to the photo. And remember, if you don't like where it starts, every one of these can be blended. So you can either blend right within the filter, which works really nicely, and you can try out different looks, or for more control, keep it on its own adjustment layer, because now as you try out those different looks, it's super easy to just go in and tweak the opacity for the layer itself. There we go, to dial in the effect. So before and after a subtle color grade, but giving it that soft, gentle filmic look. So hopefully that makes sense to you all. And it really is just a matter of taking control. Okay. Now we'll do something a little bit more out of the top, uh, over the top, I should say. And this is as versatile as an effect as you want it to be. So remember, you can use these any way that you see fit. So as you're designing your imagery, remember that you can actually use more than one. So in this case, I applied that sports gritty look. And I like how this is a nice, really rich, high contrast feeling. And I like the overall way it's going, but now I'd like to apply another LUT mapping effect. And we're gonna apply one of the black and white ones. Let's go with something here. We'll come down to, we'll actually do wooden for a moment. And that's going to give it a nice brownish feel. And I'll boost the contrast and take the saturation down. And see, each of these has their own slider. So if you want to combine multiple LUT mapping effects because you want to combine different looks, you can. It's not hard for you to go in and get different effects. So give that a candlelight look and dial it in. So you can start to stack these to give you your own recipe and you can use multiple ones together to evoke the feeling that you're going for. So remember, a LUT mapping effect is a jump start. So some people will apply them early on. They'll go ahead and say, you know what? I just want to instantly get a digital film stock. So let's go with the LUT mapping effect and I'm gonna apply a nice basic Kodachrome look. There we go, a little contrast and saturation. Then they'll do everything else that they wanna to do to the image. Shifting it, applying other effects, giving it sort of the soft glow, any of those things that you feel like. And then at the end, you can apply another LUT mapping effect, and this time use it for color. So you might find that it's useful that you apply an initial LUT mapping effect to change the filmic response, simulating a look of shooting on film. And then you can come back in and apply a creative one just to shift the colors. And that works quite well. And in between, you might consider tossing on uh, a simple develop filter. And that will make it easy if you need to do things like recover the highlights. And so all of these things work in conjunction 
but will make it easy for you to get the look that you're going for. And so this will allow us to change how the image feels as we start to process. Okay. All right. I think, Laurie, that's putting us into a pretty good place. If there are other questions, we'll take them. And then I'll just talk about a couple more resources. But anything else in the queue? Um, no, I think you covered pretty much everything. Uh, lots of good comments here. Good. So remember, guys, this is on you to get as creative as you want. You can use these subtly or use them strongly. The workflow, just to recap one last time, is develop the image. I'm a big fan of just using workspace. So take advantage and get the image wherever you need it to be for your default base image. If you have distortion like we do here, I can go ahead and compensate that. There we go. Now we've got a straighter line a little bit. And let's just tilt that image ever so slightly. There we go. And I'm just going to rotate that. So now I feel like that pole is straight. Let's just punch in a little bit there. There we go. And I'll just recrop it. There we are. Perfect. So now that the image is, quote, ready, then you can move on to any stylization. Taking advantage of adjustment layers is the desired workflow. Apply your lookup table as you see fit. Generally speaking, it's going to be HSL followed by the lookup table effect, the LUT mapping effect there. Toss on whatever LUT you intend to use. Let's just go ahead and load a street black and white look here. This is from that pre free preset pack that you can download. And I'm going to go with a higher contrast black and white. There we go. I like that. But I'm just going to tone down a couple of areas here slightly. There we go. And then add in your texture layer. So LUTs and texture layers, since these are often designed to simulate film stocks, can be useful because you can layer in the feeling of a paper texture or a printed film. So here we have a nice sort of speckled grain. There we go. I'm going to blend that using a gentle mode like soft light, which is much more subtle. And you see here that those subtle textures also help sell the look of film. It gives it the feeling of being printed on a piece of paper so that it takes on that look more. So I guess what you really learned here today is that to push lookup tables all the way, it's really a three recipe combination. HSL, so you can refine things, allowing you to tweak the colors that are in use. And you see there how this will allow you to convert the behavior of the lookup table the ability to tweak the intensity of the colors, even with black and whites, is going to be important. Then within the lookup table, you can refine the contrast and the saturation of the effect, which will affect how the LUT is applied. And then a little bit of texture mapping goes a long way, particularly when you use subtle values to give it the feeling of being printed on a particular film stock. So I used a lot of black and white today because that's an area that I love. And to me, black and white is much more than just desaturating the color, but it doesn't have to be black and white. Remember, you've got so many built-in looks here that you're welcome to try. You can completely change the look and feel of these. Here we have a candlelight effect, which I like. Let's just turn off that HSL for a moment, or let's try something a little more subtle. We'll go with the Beijing effect there. And you see it's just aging it a bit. And so I'll bump up the saturation. And now you see it's just giving us this nice, rich, high contrast sort of uh, duotone effect where we have a little bit of color cast here in the shadows, this nice, rich greens. But even if you don't want it rich, these can also become black and white effects. So it's really cool how the LUT mapping can be used for intense colors, subtle colors, or black and white conversions, even if it's a full color LUT. So make sure you really play with these sliders here because it opens up all sorts of options. Toss in a little bit of texture, 
and you got results. So this is a whole bunch of fun, and I hope this unlocks new opportunities to explore color and black and white photography with more creativity for you guys. All right, well, we went a full hour. I hope that uh, unlocks some ideas for you. I really appreciate so many of you coming out live and uh, we'll hang around for a few minutes and answer questions. And otherwise be sure to download all those goodies and jump right in. Great, and thanks everyone for attending. This has been a great webinar. Thank you, Rich, very much. Sure. Okay. Any open questions or uh, did we manage to get through all the other ones because you were flying away in the chat box? <laughs> <laughs> Got through most of them. There were some questions about your textures that you were showing and where to find sure. them. Sure. Uh, they're right within that black and white toolkit. So if you download that black and white toolkit, um, where did I put that? Here we go. Uh, there is 28 textures. So you can download those for free. Uh, these are all ones that um, me and my staff personally painted and uh, we're giving them away totally for free. You can use them in your own presets. Remember when you save those presets, they become actually part of it. And so some of these canvases while subtle work great. And a lot of these are purposely softer focus because I want them to feel a little bit more subtle when you blend them in. We do have strong dramatic textures in here too but most of these are softer, gentler textures. So you really just get the feeling of a paper or something underlying beneath the photo that it's printed on. That's why I have a lot of soft, gentle ones here. And so you can pull those down and uh, blend those in and totally free for you. Thanks all for coming. Okay, all right, everyone, thank you. Bye-bye.